A, a positive session. What were volumes like, though? James, we did see a good session up by 1.2%. And the good news is that we did see volumes bouncing back with $4.5 billion being traded. It's still under the average of October. $4.7 billion is the average, but much better than the last couple of sessions, which have not been able to crack that $4 billion mark. If we have a look at what's helped to support our market, we saw some good economic news uh, being released, not only here domestically, but also in China. The inflation numbers coming down from 6.5% in September down to five and a half percent in October, stirring some hopes that perhaps China could come out with some stimulus to help the global growth situation. So that seemed to help markets. Over here domestically, we also saw the Westpac consumer confidence numbers. They were a positive. They jumped up to 103.4 from a reading of 97.2. And we also saw home loan numbers up by 2.2 percent in September, bigger than the expectation of one and a half percent. But of course, this risk rally really starting with news that uh, Italy's prime minister would be resigning and that started in the US market overnight continued on the Australian market and if we have a look at the sectors to benefit we saw the materials the energy spacing space doing quite well in fact the commodity space looking quite interesting if we have a look at oil prices they have been rising steadily with our crude prices up around the 96 US a barrel mark and if we have a look the international atom Atomic uh, Energy Agency coming out with a report today saying that Iran has been working on nuclear weapons since 2003. So that's helping to support the oil market as well. But altogether, a good day for commodities and a good day for the property sector, which is up by about 2%. First, the, the short term outlook for the market. I mean, is the risk very much to the downside or a bit more sort of range trading? In terms of technicals, we are at the upper end of the range that we have been trading in. And if we have a look at the last 30 days, it really highlights that the Australian market is close to uh to testing that top that we saw at 4,417 points. And if we do see a test of that, then we're going to see a test probably of that 4,500 point mark. But the risk rally on the Australian share market in equities overnight, really seen as a temporary uh, relief rally to the news that uh, the Prime Minister of Italy is looking to resign. And in fact, the market's still concerned about Itali the Italian situation. If we have a look at the, the austerity measures as well as hopes for growth, uh, the, the mathematics of it aren't starting to stack up. And if we have a look at the 10-year bonds overnight, we saw them reaching once again a post-euro uh, record at 6.769%. So the ECB looks like it has stepped in and it's, uh, we're hoping to see a little bit of an easing in terms of those 10-year bond yields. But also a big question mark in terms of what's going to happen in Italy now and whether we are going to see early elections in Italy, possibly in January or February. So still a lot of uncertainty in terms of the European situation by no means have we found a solution there and I guess the market's hoping to see two things first of all um, some sort of bailout plan in terms of the European Financial Stability Fund funding it and um, being able to contain those Italian as well as those Spanish yields and these two countries two economies are seen as too big to fail and the other thing is a longer term solution we've never seen a successful currency union without a fiscal union as well so some steps some longer term strip uh, steps to fix those issues in Europe. So I guess in terms of the European situation, still watching that situation, we've seen a relief rally on the markets today, but whether that can continue is another thing altogether. In terms of technicals, we want to see a break of the 4,417 points in the short term, and that's been the 30 days. We go. There was a little bit of corporate news. Obviously, we're going to talk about, about Meyer and West Farmers a little later in the show, but Julia, SP Osnet, you've been uh, following. How's that faring? We've seen SP Osnet come out with some numbers and if we have a look at this stock, it's been faring uh, quite well over the last 52 weeks, up by around about 7%. Oh, yeah. But if we have a look at this uh, stock, it is a utility-based stock, so a key driver of the share price is the distribution that it makes rather than its earnings. In fact, if we have a look at its earnings result, we did see net profit falling by 12%, but that's because in the previous corresponding period, we saw a lot more tax credits that the company had to offset, um, and in this period, we didn't see that. But in terms of revenue, up by 5.7%. It's got a good yield there, a yield of 8.2%. Now, the distribution isn't likely to rise uh, quite aggressively over the next few years and that's because SPOSnet has a massive capital expenditure plan so for shareholders who are in this stock for yield will probably see modest growth in terms of distributions but not huge growth as we've been seeing with some of the, its other peers like APA so SPOSnet coming out with a half year result today no real surprises but a strong yield and that should help underpin the share price.